Okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about another application of these discrete random variables outside of just rolling some dice. So let's suppose that your buddy decides to uh, ask you to play kind of a game of chance with him and he tells you that 20% uh, of the time you're going to lose $10, so you got to pay him $10. 40% of the time uh, you don't uh, you don't pay it at all, so you don't win any money, you don't lose any money, and 30% of the time, or sorry, 40% of the time, you win $30, your buddy pays you. And we should ask some questions about this, like, uh, on average, if you were to play this game a lot, how much money would you make? Uh, should you play this game? Uh, and maybe we want to figure out also, like, what's the variance? We could find out our standard deviation. Uh, so let's just kind of go through our steps. So we've got the kind of the beginning of one of these probability tables. We've got our outcomes. Let's kind of label these again. And this is our probability mass function. Okay, so let's go ahead and po post up our cumulative distribution function and then we'll start working on how do we calculate out our expected values. All right, so our CDF, remember, is the probability that our discrete random variable uh, is going to equal or be less than or equal to a specific member of the support. And we'll go ahead and draw that guy down. Okay, so before we move on, oh, let's label that CDF. Let's define what exactly X is. So X is our random event. We don't know what the outcome is at the beginning. And so our random event is going to be playing, playing this game of chance. Okay, so we've got our random variable. It's not necessarily rolling a dice this time, uh, but it's just playing this game of chance with your buddy. And we know that our CDF is just the sum of a, any specific value of the PDF and everything before. So we start off with 0.2. The first one in your CDF is always the same as your PMF. And then we can do 0.4 plus 0.2, which gives us 0.6. Then we do 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6, which gives us 1. All right, so that wasn't too bad. We were able to get our CDF values. Um, now, maybe I would ask a question. What is the probability that when we play this game, our discrete random variable, that our winnings are going to be less than or equal to 0? We'll say less than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is a question that we can pull directly from our CDF. We can just say that, oh, hey, look at this. Zero and 10 are, or in negative 10 are less than or equal to zero, outcomes that are less than or equal to zero. And we know that their sum is uh, 0.4 plus 0.2, which is 0.6. Or we could just look at the CDF, which is identical to our probability statement over here and say that it is equal to 0.6. Cool. Uh, there's another way that we could write this, um, this probability statement. And we're going to have to start getting used to being able to kind of manipulate and go back and forth uh, between a bunch of different ways. We could also state that what is the probability that our random event is less than uh, 30. All right, so those two probability statements look different, but their values are actually going to be the same. The probability of something being less than 30 is going to be an event that is 0 or negative 10, which gives us a probability of 0.6. So those two probability statements are actually referencing the exact same event in our probability table. So we're going to have to really pay attention to our inequalities and really pay attention to what less than or less than or equal to actually infer. Uh, let me give one more example on this. Let's just look at, okay, what would be then the probability 
of playing this game that the outcome is going to be less than zero. So compared to the first one, the only thing that's different is I don't have that equals symbol in there, the less than or equal to. This one is just less than. And if we look at the probability of being less than, there's only one event in that case, and then the probability is 0.2. So notice how the first and the second one, they have the same probability, and they refer to even the same event, but they're written differently up here. The first and the third one look almost identical except the difference in the inequality, and that difference in the inequality changed the probability. So it's important to remember that with our discrete random variables, um, keeping track of those like less than or equal to, less than, they're different, and we've got to make sure that, that we keep that um, kind of straight in our brains. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to figure out how do I calculate out our expected value. So if we remember, our expected value has a equation that we can use. So the expected value of playing this game of chance over and over and over. So if we played it like, I don't know, a thousand times and took the average of all of those times or the mean of all those times, that would be equal to, we can calculate it actually from here. And it's going to be the sum of our outcome value multiplied by its associated probability of success, or the probability that that outcome is actually going to happen. If we do that all the way down and add it up, we'll get our expected value for this particular event. OK, so let's go ahead and do it. So for our expected value, I'm going to do outcome multiplied by its associated probability of success. Okay, so we take negative 10 times 0.2, which would give us negative 2. We would take 0 times 0.4, which is equal to 0. And we take 30 times 0.4, and that is going to equal 12. Okay, and then using this equation, we should be able to come over here and answer this expected value question. So we could say, what is the expected value of playing this game? Which is also equal to, remember, that is the definition of mu, or the true mean value of playing this game. Okay, so all we need to do now is just add up these calculations that we've done. So negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2 plus 12 is 10. And so we know that the expected value of playing this game of chance of your buddies is in fact uh, $10. All right, so what does that value mean? It means that if your buddy is willing to play this game with you like for a really long time, you are completely going to clean him out because on average, he's going to be paying you $10 per game. Now some games you might lose money, in some games you might get a draw, but these 30s, on average, they're going to pay out so that on average we are actually making uh, $10 per game. Okay, so that's, that's great. We could, we could make a whole bunch of money if he's willing to play with, play with us a whole bunch. Now, maybe I would ask instead, um, what's the probability of, um, of making money on a single event. Okay, so remember, the expected value assumes that we're playing this a lot, like over and over and over and over again. Now, what's the probability instead of actually making money? So we could say, what's the probability that our samples, that our random event of playing this game is going to be greater than zero? Right, because if you're making money, you have to make more than zero. So the probability that you're going to make money on an individual event or an individual round of this game is actually just 0.4, right? There's only 0.4 probability of anything above zero. Or we could also say that this is equal to one minus the probability of being less than or equal to zero, right? Because this is like the probability of losing money. I'm using our ideas of complements. 
And that would be 1 minus, we lose, or we don't make money. So this is, this is like not making money. So either zeros or negatives. And we know that that is 0.6 right here. We already got that guy less than or equal to 0, 0.6. And this probability is then you got a 40% chance of making money on a given um, round of playing this. Okay, so that might affect like if you're going to play just once, but the expected value tells you if your buddy's willing to play with you over and over and over again, play it with him over and over and over again because the math tells you that on average you're going to be making $10 per game. Okay, next thing that we should do is we should try to calculate out what exactly the variance is. So we need one more column in order to calculate out our variance. And our variance equation is going to be equal to the sum of the observation minus the expected value, or minus mu. We want to square it, and we multiply it by its associated probability of success. And that'll give us our variance. And remember, their symbols for a variance is equal to sigma squared. Let's put up for our expected value that that guy equals mu. Okay, so we can do this. We can, we can do these calculations and, uh, and sum them all up, and we can get out our variance. So let me go back to blue. One more column here. This is going to be outcome minus expected value squared multiplied by its associated probability of success. OK, so here's what we've got to do. So our expected value, we calculated it out, and it was equal to 10. So our first one is going to be negative 10, because that's our x, negative 10, minus 10 which gives us negative 20. Square it, that gives us 400. Multiplied by 0.2 gives us a value of 80. Now, I don't expect you to be able to like just bust it out like that. If you need a calculator, you can use it. I use a calculator to calculate these out uh, before the video, so don't be impressed or anything. Anyhow, next one. Outcome, 0 minus 10 gives us negative 10. Square it, gives us 100. Multiplied by 0.4 gives us a value of 40. Okay, last one that we've got. Here we go. We've got 30 is our outcome. Minus 10 gives us 20. Square it gives us 400. Multiplied by 0.4 gives us 160. Okay, so our variance then is just going to be the sum of that last column. So 160 plus 40 is 200 plus 80 is equal to 280. So our variance of x, which once again equals sigma squared, equals 240. All right, one thing that I do want to point out is like it oftentimes is useful for us to keep track of the units. So remember, with this particular game where the outcomes are measured in dollars, so here we've got 10, and we know that's in dollars. But here the variance, what we have to remember is that the variance is going to be the unit squared of whatever the mean is. So we've got $240 squared. And you're like, mm, that's kind of a weird unit to use. And sometimes it's useful to have, but oftentimes we really want what's the standard deviation. The nice thing about the standard deviation is it's another measure of spread, just like the variance but it allows us to use the original baseline units. Okay, so if we want the standard deviation, put this guy over here. If we want the standard deviation of our random event, playing the game here, that's going to be equal to the square root of the variance. 
the square root of the variance. And the nice thing is, is because this is sigma squared for our variance, the symbol that we use for the standard deviation is just sigma. All right, so now with that equation, we can come over here and calculate out our standard deviation. And our standard deviation of our random event, of our discrete random variable, is going to be equal to sigma, which is going to be equal to the square root of $240 squared. And if you take, oh, sorry, not 240. 280, there we go. 160 plus 40, 200 plus 80 is 280, got it. And when we take the square root of this guy, what we get is 16.733. And remember, this is in units back in dollars. OK. so. This is how we can kind of work through. This is not like a dice. This is just kind of a general situation. And we can use this methodology for any kind of general discrete random variable. So we could have, we need to have all of the outcomes. We have to know what values our outcomes are. And we need to know the values of the probability mass function. But once we have those two pieces, we know what the CDF is. We know how to calculate it. We can calculate this column, which allows us to calculate out the uh, expected value. And we can calculate out this last column because we have all the um, variables that we need, which will allow us to calculate out the variance. And once we have the variance, we can calculate out our standard deviation. When we have the expected value, uh, we know that if we were to play this game over and over and over again, uh, on average, what would our mean value be? And we can also use this table to ask a whole bunch of different probability questions, like what's the probability of being less than or equal to a value, or the probability of being greater than a specific value. And remember, those probabilities are like, um, these are what's the probability for a single, um, for a, a, a single time running through this game. So what's the probability that the next time you know we play this game that we make money and the probability is we've got a 40% chance uh, of making money. So sometimes we, the question is different. It's like, well, how, what's the probability of making money on the next time that, that we go? Or what's the probability, or like, what's our expected value if we were to play this game over and over again, how much money would we make? Other questions that we could ask is like, I could ask, what's the most likely outcome of a particular game? And most likely outcome here is there's two because 0.4 is our highest value. And so it's most likely that you either make no money or you make $30. What's the least likely outcome um, when you play this game? Well, the least likely outcome is to lose your $10. You've got a 20% chance of losing your $10. And we will continue to practice this, but really, once again, just like in the previous probability section, one of the hardest parts or the crux of this a lot is figuring out how to get our probability statements written out correctly and interpret them uh, with the table.